Sara has been on, should we call it a pilgrimage? Yes, let's call it a pilgrimage. And what's so great is I've seen another bit of the southeast I've ever seen before. And of course, I'm out of my car, so I'm seeing some beautiful countryside. And I always thought a pilgrimage had to be religious. I don't know what you think about it, but it doesn't. And not only that, I did something in a church this week that I've never done before. Since the times of ancient Britain, people journeyed on foot across our land to specific destinations for days or weeks, often for religious purposes. We call these walks pilgrimages, and they continue to this day. But there is a lost pilgrim route which has recently been rediscovered. The old way stretches from Southampton to Canterbury, around the former coastline. Today, I'm walking a section from Icklesham to Rye with Dawn Champion, is working to bring the old way to modern walkers. It was discovered on a 14th century road map um, called the Goth Map, where there's this intriguing red line that connects all of these um, destinations together. And the fact that it connects to Canterbury is a really good indication that it's a route that would have been used by medieval pilgrims. So a pilgrimage, basically a walk, but obviously stopping at a load of holy places, or is that not really quite what it is? Well, we say it's a walk to a special destination with a specific intention. And it's really about um, finding your own personal meaning and connecting with the landscape, um, the stories that you discover, finding resonance um, in the places that you come to. Our first stop is All Saints and St Nicholas Church in Icklesham, where Dawn shows me evidence of those who came before us at least five centuries ago. And we know that pilgrims would have been passing through here because they've left some graffiti behind. So you can just see some little cross marks on the, on the column there, and it was traditional for pilgrims to, to make these marks, either when they were setting off or when they returned, possibly when they were passing through. As we walk, Dawn tells me that people of all faiths, or none at all, are welcome and there are non-religious sites aplenty along the old way, like this area, which inspired wind in the willows. The route continues to Winchelsea, and Dawn has a surprising way to soak up the atmosphere and stained glass glory of St Thomas the Martyr. Lying on the floor, we can really take a moment to be in peace and stillness, and look at all the light streaming through these spectacular windows and all their remarkable colours. And if we're lucky, we might just have a moment that resonates with our intention. We end at St Thomas's in Rye with a climb up the church tower and a chance to reflect. So here we are, Sarah. Journey's end. My goodness me. That was quite a climb up that tower there anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> it is. And you can, um, you can see all the way that we've been right the way back to Bickleshun from up here. Well, you could have a clearer day. <laughs> <laughs> if only the sun was shining. Yeah. That's amazing, really, to look back on your journey. Yeah, and, it, and it's a really lovely moment just to um, stop and take stop and just kind of consider whether you're now taking your journey further forward onwards to Canterbury um, or whether you're, you're ending your journey here. Oh, relax now. And you've got your breath back. Uh, just about. It took a long time. Did, have you ever lay on the ground in the church before? That was really amazing to do that, actually, to look up at the stained glass in a really different way. I really, really love that. The colours were beautiful. Uh, uh, what a great segue that just brings me to, because not only that, the colours have been absolutely magnificent this evening. Nature putting on quite a show. 